maraming pagtatangka ang mga tao na busisiin ang Diyos. Unawain, kilalanin ng ganap. People usually fail to understand God. Many attempts fail at agreeing with God, and therefore, many people fail to obey God. Because of that, a lot of people are not blessed, and they don't benefit from God because they do not see eye to eye with what they think God should be. What accounts for such failure? Bakit maraming pagtatangkang unawain ng Diyos ang umuwi sa kabiguan? Yan ang ating sisikaping unawain kahit paanong madagdag sa ating kaunawaan ang pamagat ng ating pag-aaral, Brain Limits. Salamat Panginoon dahil binibigyan niyo kami ng kakayanang umunawa ng kailangang unawain. At nananatili rin kayong mahiwaga sa mga larangan na kayo'y talagang mahiwaga. Turuan niyo kami, Panginoon, na siya sa atin ang usaping ito. Makita namin ang relasyon ng aming isip sa inyong kalwalhatian at lumagay kami sa lugar. Dagdagan niyo ang kaunawaan namin sa ganitong mga mahalagang issues ng buhay namin. At higit sa lahat, dagdagan niyo at tibayan na aming pananalig. Sa sandaling ito, humihingi kami na inyong pagbabasbas, paglilinis, pagpapalakas sa aming mga katawan, pagpapagaling sa aming mga karamdaman. Higit sa lahat ang pagpapayaman ng aming isip para maabot yung kaya at dapat abutin at ipasa inyo yung sa inyo lamang. Lord, you ask you to reveal yourself to us in ways that are needed by us while we continue to glorify you for your many mysteries. Father, teach us how to stand in, your, in awe of your presence and teach us how to relate to your mystery. Lead us, teach us, be the speaker, O oh God. Use your servant only as your instrument. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, our Savior, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Brain limits. Limits can become noun and it can also it can become verb. May mga limitasyon ng isip at may mga ginagawang paglilimita sa atin ng ating isip. Let's take a look at this tantalizing issue of understanding God through the mind. Yan naman ang ginagawa ng napakaraming tao sa mahabang panahon. Man, very specially modern man, usually measures God by approaches and approaches God through and places God in his brain, in his mind. Kung meron tayong ginagamit na tulay para unawain ng Diyos, madalas ginagamit natin ang ating utak, ang ating isip. But then we fall into the proverbial story of a boy trying to put the water of the ocean in a very small hole that he dug in the sand. Akala niya pwede, akala niya kasya, at akala niya doon lang pwedeng ilagay yung tubig ng dagat sa maliit na hukay na ginawa niya sa buhangin. People try to decode, to simplify, and to understand God through logic. Based on reason, which is based on knowledge. Yun yung proseso. Gusto kong maintindihan ng Diyos, therefore, gagamit ako ng logic. Gagamit ako ng mga theorems, mga constructs in my mind, philosophies. Gagamit ako ng pangangatwiran, at siyempre ang pangangatwiran ito ay nakasalalay lang naman at nakabase sa alam ko, sa mga knowledge and building blocks of knowledge. Even theology attempts this approach to understand God through logical thinking. And therefore, it leads to a lot of conflicts. Philosophy uses logic and reason. This attempt cannot fully succeed. This attempt fails. Why? Because man's knowledge is imperfect, while God is perfect. Pag dinaan mo sa runong, sa talino, sa katwiran, ang pag-unawa sa Diyos, konti lang lang yung mararating, hindi ka makalalayo, at pagkatapos, 
magdidilim na dahil ang karunungan mo ikulang samantalang ang Diyos ay ganap. 1 Corinthians 13:9 to 12 We don't know everything and our prophecies are not complete. But what is perfect will someday appear and what isn't perfect will then disappear. When we were children, we thought and reasoned as children do. But when we grew up, we quit our childish ways. Now, all we can see of God is like a cloudy picture in a mirror. Later, we will see Him face to face. We don't know everything, but then we will, just as God completely understands us. Napakalinaw ng sinasabi dito sa unang korinto, konti lang ang alam natin. Maging ang ating prophecies, maging ang alam ng mga propeta, limitado. Pagdating ng panahon, mauunawa natin yung ganap, yung perfecto, yung Diyos, tulad ng kung paano niya tayo nauunawa ng ganap ngayon. But meanwhile, one way lang ang pag-unawa. Nauunawa tayong buong buo ng Diyos, pero hindi natin siya ganap na naiintindihan. Kung paano tayo tumitingin sa isang salamin na mausok, kumalabo, at nakikita natin ang imahe ng gusto nating tingnan, ganun lang ang kaya nating makita tungkol sa Diyos. Pero ang mahalaga, kitang-kita niya tayo. Ang mahalaga, nauunawa at naiintindihan niya tayo. Para lang daw tayo mga batang isip bata, katwirang bata, pero pagdating ng araw, Pagbabalik ng Panginoon at ibinunyag na ang mga himala at mga misteryo, doon pa lang tayo mag-aasal at mag-iisip na parang matanda. Man's knowledge is very limited like that of a child's knowledge. Job 38 Nung maraming reklamo si Job sa Diyos, maraming tanong, ang buti-buti ko, bakit ako pinaparosahan? Wala naman akong ginawang masama. Ba't ganito nangyayari sa buhay ko? I don't agree. From out of a storm, the Lord said to Job, Why do you talk so much when you know so little? Now, get ready to face me. Can you answer the questions I ask? How did I lay the foundation for the earth? Were you there? Doubtless, you know who decided its length. And with what supports the foundation? Did you ever tell the sun to rise, and did it obey? Did it take hold of the earth and shake out wicked the wicked like dust from a rug? Job, have you ever walked on the ocean floor? Have you seen the gate to the world of the dead? Can you arrange the stars in groups such as the Orion and the Pleiades? Do you control the stars and set in place the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper? Do you know the laws that govern the heavens? And can you make them rule the earth? Sabi ng Panginoon kay Job, o marami kang reklamo, tanong ka ng tanong. Alam mo ba yung alam ko? Nagawa mo na ba yung ginawa ko noon pa? Kaya mo bang lusungin ang dagat at paglakad ka sa ocean floor? Kaya mo bang utusan ang mga bituin na ayusin ang mga sarili nila? Of course, the obvious answer is no. Therefore, your knowledge is too limited to even discuss with me, much less to question me. Sino ka? Ano ang alam mo? para magreklamo at magsabi ko ano ang dapat at ano ang tama. So do not even attempt to second guess God. Why else will the enterprise to understand God through the mind fail? Because man's thoughts are not the same as God's thoughts. Hindi pareho mag-isip ang Diyos at tao. Pamisa-misan, magkamukha. Pero madalas, hindi. Paano mo hahanapin sa Diyos yung katwiran mo? Eh, katwiran lang yun ng tao. Iba naman ang katwiran niya. Isaiah 
the Lord says, My thoughts and my ways are not like yours. So to try to correspond with God, thought to thought, idea to idea, will fail. Why else will understanding God come short? Because God's standards are not the same as man's standards. Ibang mag-isip ang Diyos at iba ang mga panukatan ng Diyos. Iba sa Kanya ang matagal, iba ang mabilis, iba ang mahaba, iba ang maiksi. 2 Peter 3.8 Dear friends, don't forget that for the Lord one day is the same as a thousand years. And a thousand years is the same as one day. Magkaiba tayo ng pananaw sa panahon, sa espasyo, sa lahat-lahat. Psalm 90 verse 4 But a thousand years mean nothing to you. They are merely a day gone by or a few hours in the night. So God's ways are higher and deeper than man's ways. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9, the Lord says, My thoughts are and my ways are not like yours. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours. Napakainan pa ulit-ulitin para paalalahan ng tayo mga taong pinipilit sukatin ng Diyos sa ating panukat at pinipilit na ang katwiran ng Diyos ay maging kung ano ang ating pangangatwiran. Psalm 92 verse 5, you do great things, Lord. Your thoughts are too deep. Yun ang dapat nating sabihin sa Diyos. Mahiwaga po kayo. At di ako maglalakas ng loob o mga ngahas na sukatin kayo. Much less to disagree with you. Or to try to correct you and say, Lord, bakit siya pa po ang namatay at hindi si ganon? Bakit ako pa ang nagkasakit at hindi siya? Bakit ganito't ganon? Bakit yung taong yun hindi naman mabuti? Bakit siya gumiginhawa? Ba't ako hindi? Iba ang iniisip natin sa iniisip ng Diyos. The intellectual and logical approach to God only brings quarrels among people of various schools of thoughts. Kaya nagkakagulo ang relihiyon eh. Kaya ang pinakamagulong larangan, relihiyon, lahat ng bagay na may kinalaman sa Diyos, Kasi nakakagulo yung mga tao kung paano uunawain ng Diyos, kung paano bibigyan ng kahulugan yung sinasabi ng Diyos, kung paano i-apply sa buhay, at kung paano i-interpret. The intellectual approach to God only brings frustration because you cannot. It only brings doubts, disenchantment, even skepticism and disbelief. I cannot understand God, therefore God is wrong. I cannot see God, therefore God does not exist. I do not agree with God, therefore God is unjust. Ganun ang inaabot ng mga taong puro isip lang ang ginagamit. But doubt and skepticism and disbelief result in grave loss. Yung isip ng isip tungkol sa Diyos. Yung gustong distrongkahin yung Diyos sa parang Lego, ikabit, buuin, tanggal-tanggalin ang mga parts na akala mo science experiment, sila ang nalulugi. Dahil kung ang wakasan ng kanilang mga paghahanap, e eh duda, kawalan ng pananalig, lugi sila. Dahil ang tunay na mayaman, ay eh yung nananalig. Ang tunay na kayamanan ay pananalig because faith can move mountains. Faith can even heal you of your infirmities when you truly believe. God said with faith, nothing is impossible. But without faith, nothing can be done. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if your inquiry, based on logic, based on human reason, based on human standards, will only lead to confusion, and later on to the weakening of faith or to the loss of faith, kawawa ka naman. Paano ka harap sa kamatayan kung wala kang pinaniniwalaan? Paano ka harap sa mga mabibigat na dagok ng buhay? Paano ka harap 
sa katotohanan ang lahat ng tao ay mamamatay. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith, no one can please God. We must believe that God is real and that He rewards everyone who searches for Him. So sasabihin na iba, yung pala searching, so I'm searching. Why will that not be rewarded? Yes, but how will you search? Will you search through the mind? Will you search through the logic? Through reason? Or through something else? Tayo pong mga tao ay merong tatlong elemento. Body, soul, spirit. The body is that which takes from the earth, which is from the ground, which goes to the ground when we die. Soul is our emotion, our personality, which is based on thought, which is really based on the mind. How you think, that becomes your personality. And that also dies, apparently, when the body dies. And then we have the spirit, which is from God, which returns to God. If you want to correspond with God, you cannot correspond through the body. The body is very limited. Although, we can correspond with God up to a point. You want to correspond with God, you cannot correspond with God fully through the mind. Because the mind is limited. How can a created mind, how can a finite mind totally comprehend an infinite God, an infinite creator? So, you will go to a dead end when you use your brain to understand God. And when you use your brain to try to connect with God, it's very, going to be very limited. Thoughts, reason, theology, philosophy can only go so far. But you want to correspond with God? Correspond with God through your spirit because the spirit of God is in you and you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Sabi nga sa Romans 8.28, you don't even know how to pray. But the Spirit helps you by interceding and praying for you. It means that your brain does not know what to pray for. Your thoughts cannot know what really God wants to give you and what you should be praying for. Therefore, the Spirit bypasses your brain, your reason and your logic, and your spirit connects directly with the Spirit of God. And there is correspondence between the two worlds, heaven and earth, through your spirit and the Spirit of God, not through your mind, not through your body. You are body, mind, and spirit. You are body, soul, thought, and spirit. At yung pagtatangka na makarating at maunawa ang Diyos sa pamamagitan ng physical or mental procedures will never yield so much. That's why it is important to develop our spirituality. Sabi sa James 1.6, kung gano'ng kahalaga ang pananalig, when you ask for something, you must have faith and not doubt. Anyone who doubts is like an ocean, an ocean wave tossed around in a storm. Hindi sinabi, you must have knowledge. You must know what to ask for. You must know how to ask. Sabi, you must have faith. It is faith that connects us with God, not knowledge. Although up to a point, knowledge is important, especially if you like to communicate the faith, if you would like to communicate the teachings of God, you need knowledge. But in your personal relationship with God, what matters is your spiritual communication. Why else will understanding God fail? Because understanding God is not man's business. Hindi naman tayo inutusan ng Diyos na unawain mo ako eh. Ang uto sa atin, sundin mo ako. Para mga bata, may inuutos ang magulang, hindi naman nila laging nauunawa kasi bata sila. Mabuting sumunod na lang sila. Pagtanda nila, tsaka lang nila malalaman, ay tama pala si nanay, ay tama pala si tatay. How could a finite mind comprehend the infinite God? How could a created brain contain the Creator. Kaya mulit-muli, binabalikan ko yung napakagandang halimbawa na batang naguhukay sa mga 
da, sa tabi ng dagat, sa buhangin, ginagamit ang kanyang kamay at may maliit siyang hukay sa buhangin at may nagdumaan, nagtanong, paanin mo ang hukay na yan? Ilalagay ko sa hukay na ito ang lahat ng tubig ng dagat na yan. Yun ang ambisyon ng bata. At yun ang ambisyon ng sino mang sinisikap na ilagay sa kaprasong hukay na ito, sa loob ng bungo na ito, sa kaprasong brain, ang Diyos. Ang buong ideya ng divine at kung paano unawain ang Diyos is a childish attempt. Psalm 40 verse 5 You, Lord God, have done many wonderful things and you have planned marvelous things for us. No one is like you. I would never be able to tell all you have done. Yun ang magandang ma-realize. Hindi ko po kayang bilangin lahat kati mga ginawa nyo. Hindi ko kayang sukatin yan. Sobrang kahanga-hanga. Sobrang dapat na lamang na ipagbunyi, ipagdiwang. Pero para isa-isahin kong bilangin, hindi ko kaya yan. Psalm 139 verse 18, I try to count your thoughts, but they outnumber the grains of sand on the beach. I try to understand you, but I cannot. John 21, 21-22, When Peter saw that disciple, he asked Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, What is it to you? If you want, if I want him to live until I return, you must follow me. May issue dito, nagtatanong si Pedro tungkol kay John the Beloved, eh siya, ano mangyayari sa kanya? Sabi ni Lord, eh ano ngayon sa'yo? Kung anong bala ko sa kanya? Kung bala ko manatili siyang buhay hanggang bumalik ako, that's my business. Huwag mo na yung panghimasukan. Sumunod ka na lang. Huwag ka na magtanong. Huwag ka na mag-isip. Hindi kaya ng utak mo yan. Sumunod ka na lang. Darating ang panahon, mauunawa mo rin lahat. Kung ang Espiritu mo ay nakalaya na sa katawan, kung ang Espiritu mo nakalaya na sa utak, sa isip, sa bias mo, sa mga alam at hindi mo alam na nakondisyon dahil lang sa utak mo that your knowledge-based consciousness, which is very limited, when you die, your spirit will be free from all this, things will be revealed to you. But for now, just believe and obey. Noong si Moses ay kinausap ng Diyos, naglakas loob at nangaha si Moses na usisain ko anong pangalan ng Diyos. Alam nyo kasi, pag nalaman mo ang pangalan ng isang tao, parang nabihag mo siya. Alam mo kung ano yung karakter niya, alam mo kung saan tribo siya galing, alam mo kung anong mapilido niya, alam mo kung sino magulang niya, alam mo kung anong mga sakit ng pamilyang ito. In other words, nalalaman mo ang maraming bagay para makontrol ang isang tao pag alam mo ang kanyang pangalan. Kaya nga yung mga Kastila noon, hirap na hirap tandaan ang mga pangalan natin at hirap na hirap tayong sunda nila dahil palipat-lipat ng mga tinitiran yung mga Pilipino para huwag nila laging mautusan, huwag mabuwisan. Naguto sila, bigyan ng Spanish names lahat ng mga Pilipino na yan. So kung taga-bakon, sorsogon ka, lahat ng apelido nyo, letter D ang simula. Kung ganitong bayan ka, lahat ng apelido, letter L, para pag nakita yung pangalan mo, alam mo, taga-bakon ka, no? Nakokontrol ka kasi alam ang pangalan mo. Moses asked God about his name. Isang malaking kapangahasan. Exodus 3:13-15. Moses answered, "I will tell the people of Israel that the God of their ancestors worshipped that their God, that the God their ancestors worshipped has sent me to them. But what should I say if they ask me your name?" God said to Moses, "I am the eternal God." So tell them that the Lord, whose name is I Am, has sent you. This is my name forever, and it will be the name. It will. It is the name that people must use from now on. Nagbigay ba ng pangalan ng Dios? No. Sabi niya, ako ay kung sino ako. I am who I am. Pag mo nang uriratin na pangalan ko, no name. Why? Because a name limits. Di ba, pagka nakita mo yung pangalan, halimbawa ng isang tao, alam mo, ay Chinese, ay Japanese. Pagka sinabi halimbawa, ganito yung pangalan niya, alam mo ang ethnicity. 
But God is beyond all that. So ang tawag na lang ng mga tao sa kanila, the Lord. Dahil yung pangalan di binigay. Kaya din ayaw ng Diyos ang imahen. Pag binigyan mo siya ng imahen, pipili ka, black ba o white ang skin niya, kulot ba o straight ang buhok niya, matangos ba ang ilong o pango, malilimit. No name, no image. Because God is infinite. God is beyond name and beyond image because He is eternal. So sabi niya, I am who I am. Now, when you not only attempt to give God a name, but to put Him in a box, to explain Him through philosophy or theory or theology, you actually vulgarize God and you reduce God. Kaya mga theologians sa mga pinakamagugulong tao sa balat ng lupa, kasi pinipilit nilang hulihin sa exact words, sa exact shape, exact configuration, yung eternal and immeasurable God. Kaya hindi sila nagsasangayunan kung paano gagawin yun dahil you can do it many ways. Kaya kahit pag binabasa mo yung scripture, ano bang dapat? Binyag ba na buhos, wisik, lubog? Actually, kung babasahin mo lahat yung verses, lahat yun, pwede naman eh. Dahil magkakasya yung reading mo, sa mga nakasulat. So, nagkakagulo-gulo ngayon yung mga relihiyon kung anong gagawing binyag, kung anong gagawing ganito at gagawing ganon. Kasi sobrang ipinapako sa salita, ipinapako sa ideya, sa teorya, yung dapat sana'y lumulutang na malaalapa at nakatotohanan, ipinapako nila sa lupa at ginagawa nilang sobrang solid. Therefore, hindi rin tuloy maka-adjust. Acts 1.7 He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates that the Father has set by His own authority. O, gusto rin ng mga taong ipako ang Diyos kung kailan babalik si Jesus, kailan magugunaw ang mundo, etc., etc. Sabi sa kanila, no, hindi yan para sa inyo mahalaman. Huwag nyo nang alamin yan. And yet, sa kabila ng malino na turo na ito, marami pa rin yung naglalagay ng dates. Katikas-tikas ng ulo ng tao, gustong ipako yung Diyos na darating si Jesus sa ganitong araw, sa ganong pecha. Pag hindi dumating, eh kasi hindi kayo naniwala eh, so hindi tuloy dumating. So kayo may kasalanan. Mga palusot. Kasi ipapako mo, hindi mangyayari. Di ano mangyayari sa'yo, napapahiya ka. Matthew 19.26, Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So what is Jesus saying? That man is gravely limited. Nung kinausap ng Panginoon si Nicodemus, sabi ni Lord sa kanya, you must be born again. John 3, 9-10, How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, Jesus said, and you do not understand these things. Kasi ang tanong nitong si Nicodemus, how? Mechanics, methods, ano yan? Physics. Physics experiment na may methodology na kailangang ilagay sa manual. Sabi niya, paano mangyayari yun? Paano ako ipapanganak na muli? Ang tanda-tanda ko na. Sabi ni Lord, teacher ka ng Israel, ganyan ka mga twira, hindi mo maintindihan. Iba naman ang pinag-uusapan natin. Pinipilit mo kasing ibaba yung discussion kung saan madali sa iyo na kontrolin yung data mo. Therefore, ang baba ng discussion natin, hindi tataas. But the thoughts of God are high and you must transcend that which is physical, that which is even logical. Kahit si Mary, sinabihan, magdadalan tao ka. Luke 1.34-39, How will this be? Mary asked the angel, Since I am a virgin. Again, she's talking about method. Paano ko magdadalang tao? Eh, wala naman akong karanasan kahit kaninong lalaki. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. In other words, this is above you. Hindi mo na ito maiintindihan. Lumuhod ka na lang dyan, mangyayari yun. Override yourself. Override your reason. Override your intelligence. Override your knowledge. Because we are talking about eternal things that cannot be measured. At ang napakaliyon ako na conclusion ng 2 Corinthians 5.7, For we live by faith, not by sight. Sight, senses, reason, knowledge. Sabi, hindi tayo nabubuhay sa pamamagitan ng mga nakikita at nauunawa. 
na mga naririnig, na decode, not by reason, not by the mind, but by the Spirit. Ang kailangan na go-operate, yung Espiritong nasa atin, hindi yung brain. Because the brain is so gravely limited. Although the brain is a very wonderful machine by itself. But it has great limits. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 talks about people having spirit, soul, and body. So ang gagamitin natin sa pakikipag-ugnayan sa Diyos, yung spirit, hindi yung soul, hindi yung mind, hindi yung knowledge. Dahil gugulo ang usapan. Kailangan parehong frequency. Therefore, do not always strive to understand God. Mapapagod ka lang. Unawain mo na lang yung konti na kailangan mong maunawa sa yung daily activities. Pero huwag mo nang unawain kung bakit tinawag si David na God after man, a man after God's own heart. Samantalang may mga kasalanan, hindi mo na malalaman kahit kailan yon. Hindi mo na maiintindihan kung bakit ganito at bakit ganun. Hindi naman kasi ipinapaliwanag. Yung hindi ipinapaliwanag, hangaan mo na lang para tahimik ang buhay. Hindi natin sinasabi, huwag na tayo mag-isip, mag-aral at gumamit ng utak. Merong saysay yan, pero hindi sa mga bagay na espiritual. Konti lang ang saysay niyan para magka-discipline ka lang how to think, how to make conclusions. And your conclusion is, I cannot think about this because this is beyond me. Just hear, believe, believe in, and obey God. Alam niyo yung walang alam, at yung maraming alam na mali, pareho lang yung mangmang, napagod pa yung marunong. Don't over-theologize, only to have to over-apologize. At ito po kung minsan, ang kalabisan ng mga seminaryo, mga religious schools, tinitheologize ang Diyos. Sobrang kinakahon, sobrang inuunawa. Pinag-uusapan pa kung gano'ng kahaba ang balbas ng Diyos Ama. Paano ba nag-uusap ang Diyos Ama at Diyos Anak? Paano uupo sa kaliwa at sa kanan? Paano naging kalapati ang Espiritu Santo? All of these are realms of thought. But these are symbolisms to make us understand Sabi sa Bible, I speak in human terms only because of your natural limitation. God cannot speak to us at His level because we are humans. Therefore, God uses human language, human poetry, human symbolisms to give us a clue of what He wants and what He wants to communicate. But you cannot nail down every thought to what is at the level of the mind. Ang sobrang gumagamit ng logic, nakukulong, nasusukol. Kaya yung sobrang nagtitiyolajize tungkol sa Diyos, may iba pang subject, apologetics. Kasi lahat ng hindi maipaliwanag at gumulo ng gumulo dahil sinikap nilang ipako sa utak ng tao, meron na yung mga hindi maintindihan, may mga loose ends, may magulo, may iba pang subject, apologetics. Para pagtakpan lahat yung kaguluhan na yon. Hindi naman sana magulo kung hindi mo inuurirat. Hayaan mo na lang na nandun, di mo naman kailangan sa buhay mo na maintindihan lahat yun. That's why a full-blown science and art of apologetics had to be invented by the Bible schools. So do not over-rationalize. Yung mga if P, then Q, na Lord, bakit po ako nagdasal? Namatay yung pinagdasal ko. but po siya hindi nagdasal, hindi siya namatay? Yan yung mga if P, then Q. Kasi ipinapako mo ang Diyos na ipinag, pag ipinag-pray mo, gagaling. Hindi naman laging ganun, di ba? Meron mo magtatulang, ito pa po ako magpe-pray kung hindi rin lang laging gagaling. Eh sabi, mag-pray ka eh. Again, you use your logic to confuse yourself. Hindi maaaring bihagi ng isip ang Espiritu ng Diyos. Kaya kahit kailan hindi ako papato sa mga debate, may imbitasyon, debate, magbabakbakan yung mga pastor, mga teologyan, mga leader ng iba-ibang relihiyon para panoorin ng kung sino-sinong naaaliw sa kanila mga bakbakan, pero wala rin namang mararating yun eh, kasi wala rin namang papayag na manalo yung isa. Pinagtatalo-talunan kasi pinipilit bihagi ng isip, therefore, ang tingin ko sa Josh Green, 
Sabi ni iba, hindi, blue ang nakita ko. Yung iba, hindi, orange. Mag-aaway-aaway kayo ngayon. Yung pala, e-rainbow naman yung Diyos. No? Lahat kasya. Pinipilit kasi yung pag-awayan ng mga hindi naman dapat. The brain is too limited. Words, ideas, constructs are too limited. Kaya I speak in human terms because of your natural limitation. Si Paul sa Acts 17, 23-24 I was going through your city and looking at the things you worship. I found an altar with the words to an unknown God. You worship this God but you don't really know Him. So I want to tell you about Him. This God made the world and everything in it. He is Lord of heaven and earth and He doesn't live in temples built by human hands. Maraming mga nagbabasa ngayon nito, minamasama nila yung mga Greeks na meron silang to an unknown God, meron silang dambana to an unknown God. But the truth is, it was a healthy and wise blank space for the unknown that the Greeks allowed themselves to have. Sa katalinuhan ng mga Greeks, alam nilang hindi sila ganong katalino. Nasa dami ng alam nila, marami rin silang hindi alam. Kaya gumawa sila ng dambana para sa Diyos na di nila kilala. At dahil may espasyo sa utak nila, yung katotohanan may hindi sila alam, may hindi sila kilala, dumali kay Paul na ipakilala sa kanila. Sabi, alam nyo yung hindi nyo kilala na yan, ipapakilala ko sa inyo kasi kilala ko. Then, Paul talked about Jesus. Eh kung sa utak ng mga Greek, to our God named A, to our God named B, named C, tas wala nang ibang space, eh di hindi na sila magbibigay ng space kay Jesus. Pero dahil nakabukas ang isip nila na hindi nila alam lahat, mayroong pwedeng pasukan yung pagtuturo tungkol kay Jesus. Ang tunay na matalinong tao, lalot maraming alam, kinikilala niyang marami siyang hindi alam, hindi siya nagsasara ng isip, para kung may dumating na karapat dapat na tanggapin ideya, ay nakabukas ang isip niya at tatanggapin niya yun. It's important to have an enlightened realization and admission of lack of knowledge. Pagka ganun, hindi mag-aaway-away ang mga tao. Pag mayroong ibang ideya ang isang tao tungkol sa Diyos, iba sa ideya mo, hindi mo siya tatawaging demonic. Sasabihin mo lang, iba ang level ng consciousness niya ngayon sa consciousness ko. Baka may binasa siya kahapon. So ganun ngayon ang takbo ng utak niya. Hindi naman ibig sabihin hanggang kamatayan na niya, ganun pa rin ang utak niya. May iba pa rin yan pag may ibang narinig, may ibang nabasa. Kasi patuloy na hinuhubog ang laman ng ating isip. Pero pag sabi mong, alam ko na ang dapat kong malaman, nakasarado ng utak ko, dekandado, yun ang kamangmangan. Kasi paano mo malalaman ang lahat ng dapat malaman kahit ta- sampung buhay ang ibuhay mo, kulang. That's why we must be tentative and we must develop a healthy respect for our fellow seekers though we do not always agree. Who knows the truth? Pag may nagsabi sa inyong, ako alam na alam ko lahat ng katotohanan, yun ang sobrang yung pagdudahan dahil siguradong yun ang mali. Kasi hindi pwedeng malaman ng isang tao ang lahat ng katotohanan sa maiksing panahon. Mas kaduda-duda yung sobrang laging siguradong siya ang tama kesa dun sa merong kung minsan ay pag-iisip at pagdadahan-dahan na sinasabi niyang naniniwala. Akong tama ako, kumbinsido akong tama ako, pero alam kong posible pa rin hindi ako tama. Doon ka magtiwala sa ganong tao. Many things can be known, but so much more, infinitely more, cannot be known in this body, in this state, in this fallen nature. Spiritual, spirit, spiritual things especially can only be revealed by the Spirit of God to your spirit. Kaya sabi ng Romans 8.28, you don't even know how to pray. Your mind does not know, but your spirit prays for you. The Holy Spirit prays for you. The Holy Spirit connects with your spirit and with or without the consent of your mind, prayer is said. Yun ang praying in the spirit. Most of the time kami, kasi we only, only pray with the mind. Kaya kumisan yung prayer natin, parang shopping list, sobrang logical, may mga ililista, lahat nakapray. Hindi naman masamang gawin yun, pero hindi lang ganun ang prayer. It's not only a mental exercise. There are times when you have to empty yourself of your thoughts and allow your spirit to communicate with the Spirit of God. 
when you have no agenda and you just lay still and you hear the Word of God, not through your ears, not through your brain, but through your spirit. At ito ang kulang na kulang na development sa mga Kristiyano, spiritual development. Meron lang tayo mental development, intellectual development, theological development, na ang wakas ay gulo, away, competition. Because the mind is very little. Physical temples cannot contain God. Neither can the brain, which is another physical temple, contain God. So just enjoy the wonder. Believe. Faith is precious. Pag may doubt, transcend the words, transcend the ideas and the logic, transcend the laws of nature that you know, and let the Spirit lead you, not the mind leading you. Huwag nating sobrang paanda rin ang utak in spiritual matter, in spiritual issues because spirit is above and beyond the mind. Hindi patalinuhan. Kaya yung mga maraming tumatalino, nagiging atheist eh. Kasi hindi makontain ng utak nila yung Diyos, therefore, walang Diyos. Hindi kasi kasya ang liit kasi ng utak. Non-belief or unbelief only lead to hopelessness and fear. The way to God is through the spirit. Not through the body, not through the soul, not the mind, not the thought. Romans 8.26 In certain ways, we are weak, but the Spirit is here to help us. For example, when we don't know what to pray for, the Spirit prays for us in ways that cannot be put into words. So nakikita niyo, bypass. Di ba kung may mga bayan na masisikip, may mga kalsada na bypass, diversion road. Hindi na dumadaan sa bayan, dadaan na sa mga bukid para makarating doon sa susunod na pupuntahan, hindi na abala. Sabi, ganun din ang pananalangin. Yung espiritu nyo, hindi na dumadaan sa utak nyo, dumederetso sa espiritu ng Diyos, kasi hindi naman alam ng utak nyo what to pray for. Eh. The mind does not know it. So let our spirit... Let God's Spirit in us correspond with God, not only our brain, but up to a point. We can connect with God through knowledge, through logic, but don't expect it to give you all the answers. Don't expect it to satisfy all your curiosity because you are using the wrong tool. Paano kayo gugupit ng isang tela ay ang hawak nyo, halimbawa, ay martilyo? You can only succeed up to a point. But the tool to get into the spiritual world, the tool to understand the Spirit, and the tool to be ministered to by the Spirit is our own spirit, not the mind. Because the brain has limits. The brain is a gift for us. Gamitin natin para matuto tayo kung paano gumawa ng bukayo, paano magmina ng ginto, paano gumawa ng tulay, pero hindi yan ginagamit para unawain ng Diyos. It's an altogether different game. Develop your spiritual correspondence with God beyond the brain, despite the brain, and therefore transcend the doubts and the questions and move on in faith so that what God has in store for us can happen and we will develop not only our faith in God but also our faith in humanity, in other people inhabited by the Spirit of God. And then, of course, even when death comes, we will not be sad or bitter or afraid because our spirit is already connected with that which is eternal. Ama namin, patatawarin niyo po kami kung kumisan sobra kami nagagaling-galingan, nagrurunong-runungan, eh mali naman at kulang yung tools namin para kayo maintindihan. So turuan niyo na lang kami, Panginoon, na alamin kung ano yung useful sa daily life at yung mga hiwaga, mga misteryo niyo, Ireserba na lang naming maunawa pagdating ng panahong ipagkakaloob nyo na sa amin. At ibubunyag at ihahayag nyo sa amin ang walang hanggang karunungan nyo. Meanwhile, for now, O oh God, allow us to use our thoughts, our brains, progressively, productively, and even in a spiritual way. That our body, our thought, our mind will become your servants. Teach us to know you beyond thought, 
but through our spiritual experience. Pagbulay-bulayan natin mga kapatid na ilang sandali pa, tingin natin sa Panginoon yung kanyang personal na paghipo sa atin. Para kung ano man ang mga tanong natin nagpapagulo lang, ay maiwan na natin sa isang tabi at ipagpatuloy natin ang paglago ng ating espiritu. O Lord, teach us how to develop a spiritual, not an intellectual, relationship with you. Sandali tayong makinig sa mga iniudyok pa ng Espiritu na marapat nating gawin.